Welcome to Short Talks from the Hill, a research and economic development podcast of the University of Arkansas. I'm Andy Albertson. The Institute for Integrative and Innovative Research, or I-Cubed-R, was established by a landmark $194.7 million grant from the Walton Family Charitable Support Foundation. I'm joined today by the founding executive director of I-Cubed-R, Dr. Ranu Jung. Ranu joined the U of A in December 2021 and serves as an endowed chair, distinguished professor of biomedical engineering, and associate vice chancellor. Welcome. Thank you, Andy. I'm delighted to be here. Well, I'd like to start off by uh, learning what is I cubed R? What is I cubed R? I cubed R is a vision. Why I cubed R is a dream. I cubed R is a future. And I believe that I cubed R is, as it says, integrative, bringing all people together, not just within the university, but bringing all our community together, all our stakeholders together in a common vision, a common dream to grow Northwest Arkansas, to grow the state of Arkansas, and to impact the entire nation. And ultimately, by its research and, and, and its innovations, it will have a global impact. Who are the kinds of people that you hope will join iCubed R? I think people with passion, people who believe that what they do is going to make a change. People who want to make a societal impact for now and for future generations. People who are willing to take risks, who are willing to think outside the box, and are willing to bring in different ideas, different thought processes together in this diversity of imagination, a ability to uh, to, to converge ideas, connect dots that are not obviously connected, and work together to achieve a common mission to solve or common effort to solve a big grand challenge that they can't do it themselves but are willing to embrace others in that path. Long answer, no, very long answer. Great answer. When you talk about a grand challenge, I understand that there's an initial grand challenge for I cubed R. Could you talk a little bit about that and some of the research areas that will contribute to that grand challenge? When this institute was conceived, the vision was put together, it grew out of a thoughtful process that had happened. And uh, there had been this analysis done of what would it take to make this heartland area, this Northwest Arkansas area, blossom and grow forward. So building on all the other things that are happening here, whether it's the arts and the the Crystal Bridges Art Museum, for example, that has happened, the growing health sector, the the, the strength of the food sector that is here, the extensive excellence in the supply chain, logistics pathway. So food, data sciences, the the growing healthcare part. There was a vision to pull together all of that to form this institute. So then the question for us was, how do we take all of these different clusters of innovation and how do we converge them? And what do we do about converging them to address what I said earlier, a bigger problem that not individuals or not individual groups could do. So we had to come up with some kind of a grand challenge and then think about what is it that is absolutely relevant to Arkansans, to our nation, and is perhaps really a global problem. And something that popped up after all these discussions that I had with other people and looking at all these other reports and these chancellor's fellows who had put together the initial ideas and concepts and, and, and think tank thought processes for these different growth areas was metabolic health. Each one of us has a different metabolic health. It's not just our genes, it is also our environment. And it is also our daily life, our sleep habits, our what we eat, how do we exercise, what is our mental health. All of that decides 
what our each individual's metabolic health is. So in order to keep ourselves healthy, keep ourselves from ha- from keep ourselves for sustaining a good quality of life for individuals and a community it would behoove us to pay attention to the metabolic health of both individuals and the communities how can we do that we can promote it by for example eating the right foods and doing activity which is of course exercise it's everything from riding those bikes that you know we love and the ozarks allow us to do with all the mountain bicycling and all but it's also what you might do in planning the city so that people are walking to places or planning even buildings as the architecture dean has told me there are some things called well design criteria just like there's lead uh, design criteria of how do you design spaces and all of us went through uh, i think in the past two years many of us have started standing at our desks we didn't do that for a long time but this is all little things that all contribute to promoting good metabolic health and then the, it's the question of sustaining it so sustaining it is again you have food you have got exercise and activity but it is also your whole health and your whole self are you having the right sleep patterns are you are you are you are you keeping your stress levels in in place but things go awry and they are going awry for millions of people we have diabetes we have obesity we have cardiovascular diseases we have mental health issues that are coming along with it so when your metabolic health is not okay then you have many of these complications so that obviously gives us an opportunity not only to think about food and not, and think about our our um, exercise and and all of that but also interventions and those interventions might mean behavioral interventions but also interventions to to work to um, improve or or to to uh, to address the problems that come with that so that might mean um technologies drugs devices therapies that might say you get wounds with diabetes that don't heal well are there smart materials that might help you get smart dressing smart materials that might help faster wound healing or you might end up with amputations or your consequences i'm just picking one one particular disease diabetes right you have neuropathies that affect your neural control of your bladder your gut and so there are your eyes you know so are there ways in which we might have interventions for that all of that if we are going to do a th- this entire pathway of supporting metabolic health or addressing metabolic health then whatever we do whatever discoveries we make whatever development of those discoveries is or technologies that we have or food that we develop all of that must then be taken deployed so to speak into the community and so we must understand do we have the right ways of getting things to the people to the different communities to the different stakeholders do we have policies that would allow things to actually make a societal impact have we done an economic analysis of what would it mean to be able to achieve that or to be able to implement those and then the question is is it just going to be just local or is it going to be at the state at the national or global level so that that's the circle that i think about societal impact discoveries design and development delivery and deployment so this institute will not be just about making those discoveries it's about taking those discoveries to society. Yes, actually what we are going to be is much more the latter in the sense that there are many, many times institutes are are focused on fundamental research. We will do fundamental research, but we are absolutely committed to making sure that any discoveries or any technology developments or things like that that we might design and develop are being delivered because the only way we can have societal impact is if they are delivered 
to the commercial market, to the, uh, to the, say, the clinics, but they have to get out. So we need to make sure that economic development goes hand in hand with this farmer, because without economic development and without the ability to translate and take these, not just to one small company or to one small clinic, but at scale, that's the only way you have societal impact. It's not a question of one family being impacted or one individual being impacted. But if you really want really large societal impact, then this is a continuous loop. You cannot just say we are doing discovery and somebody else's responsibility it is to, okay, translate it. And then somebody else is going to take the responsibility of taking what is translated and getting it commercialized. So we, it's a very big, uh, very big dream in a way, and a very pro probably a very difficult task, and uh, some some may question the wisdom of taking on this whole s cycle. But we are in a unique place. We are in Northwest Arkansas, where we have large anchor companies who are global. We have a fast-growing ecosystem for economic development where s with smaller companies. We have a passion for making things happen. So we are in this place and we can, we can afford to dream this dream that we are not just about fundamental science. We are actually not even just about translating, but we are actually about closing the chain for making sure there is economic development happening hand in hand and it doesn't stop at that. We put in place the social structures to be able to have so, so societal impact. And we're a land grant university. Our commitment is to our people. That is part of who we are, 150 years of that. You know. So across the state, we, would, we, we, we will be committed to our land grant mission at the same time. So how do you see iCubedR evolving over, say, the next 10 years? There are many steps to be taken. So we are coming up from um, the ground up. I'll go back again that we have a beautiful blueprint or thought process because we are not alone in doing this. We have already a community of multiple stakeholders who scaffold the institute. Now with this scaffolding comes some, some aspects is just putting action items to making actual things happen. There's a building coming up. That building is going to have the right kind of project spaces to be able to do the fundamental research and also offer opportunities for the small companies that, you know, the Northwest Arkansas Council, for example, is working to bring in here, bring talent in, bring people in, bring companies in. We would offer the resources to them. So what will happen in five, 10 years is we would be able to offer an ecosystem to the starting companies and to the faculty and researchers and to our clinical partners to be able to do that whole, that pipeline, research, design, development, and move it, and moving it forward, right? So we will offer actual physical unique capabilities. The other thing that we will have done is we will have offered a, a um, thought think tank capability, so to speak, right? And so that starts to happen with more researchers as we bring in talent. So talent bringing in is also talent bringing in of faculty, of researchers, clinicians who might move into this area, but want to have an academic home also. We are able to give them a research space for them to par participate in, right? So small, uh, small businesses that are starting their business, businesses cannot afford the very expensive equipment, we will have that ability or they need some regulatory support and structure. We can offer that. So before they will have to shell out a large amount of funding for an international CRO or somebody like that, they could come to us. We will be there to help support them both in technical capabilities and also in advice capability. So this is what I see happening in the next three to five years is building spaces and building people capabilities. So attracting the right set of people who can offer support 
and who themselves are thinking of a future with that common mission of achieving what we want to do, which is, in the end, societal impact. And that is what is, when I say driven by purpose, that is our purpose. That's great. I'm excited to see everything that's going to happen in the next couple of years and decades to come. Thank you so much. It is such a pleasure to be here. Every day I wake up thinking, really, this is happening? And I, I'm, I'm so, so delighted that there is a whole community, as I said, scaffolding this future vision. Music for Short Talks from the Hill was written and performed by local musician Ben Harris. For more information and additional podcasts, visit Arkansas Research. That's arkansasresearch.uark.edu the home of science and research news at the University of Arkansas.